Islamic army destroys terrorist hideouts in a number of governorates and continue to impose security and stability. Israeli occupation soldiers transfer three wounded armed men to Nahariya hospital. Libyan Prime Minister Ali Zaydan is released after being kidnapped by armed terrorist groups authorized by the Parliament Speaker to impose security in the capital. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Yerado Krikorian with the news in English. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has expressed reservation over the results of the International Criminal Court's work. In an interview with the Rosskaya Gazeta Daily, Lavrov said the court has been in many cases politically biased, noting that over the past 11 years of its activity, it has issued one ruling of indictment and one ruling of acquittal. He explained this by the guest of certain international sites to look for pretext to use force in order to serve their own interests. Lavrov added that Russia was closely following up the activity of this judicial body and was actually cooperating with it in several files. He pointed out that the court's results could not be considered interesting, adding that the idea of its inception came after an unsuccessful experience by special courts formed to look into crimes against humanity. On this subject, Lavrov had affirmed in his statements to the paper that there was no reason to suspect that Syria was hiding anything regarding its chemical weapons. He pointed out that Syria will present late this month a detailed report on chemical weapons to the Chemical Weapons Prohibition Organization. In a series of operations, the Syrian Arab army has killed and wounded a number of terrorists in Damascus suburbs and destroyed their weapons, ammunition and criminal tools. Five terrorists were killed, including a sniper, in clashes between an army unit and a terrorist group in al Kornish al-Wastani in Jobar. The army has meanwhile continued its operations in Zamalka, Harasta, Duma, al mleha al hsainiye al ziabiye and al spene as well as the surroundings of Beijing farms, destroying a quantity of weapons and eliminating a number of terrorists. In Berze and with the cooperation of the internal security forces, Syrian Arab army units continue to pursue terrorists to impose security and stability in the area. Tunnels used by terrorists were discovered in Berze farms. Two citizens were killed and five others injured when terrorists fired a missile shell today near Al Fardos Mosque in Al Inshaat neighborhood in the city of Homs. An official source which reported this added that the terrorist attack also led to material damage in the site. Meanwhile, army troops continued to tighten siege on armed men in Babhud neighborhood to prevent their infiltration from ancient homes to Bab al Hashish Souk and to cut off the road of supplies among them. The army also took control of several residential buildings outlooking Al Zahabi Street and cleared them of terrorists as it continued its advance towards ancient homes and Al Hashish Souk. Terrorists targeted one of Homs refineries fuel tanks with a rocket shell causing big fire. The firefighters have extinguished, extinguished the fire and prevented it from moving to another tanks.
Six citizens were killed and 16 others wounded when terrorists launched motor shells on Bilal Mosque in Al Azamiya neighborhood in Aleppo. Meanwhile, army units targeted armed groups in Aleppo countryside, killing dozens of them. A military source in Aleppo said that the army executed qualitative operations during which vehicles loaded with weapons and ammunition were destroyed in Dar Hafer, Abtin, Al Layramun, Al Jabul Lake, Al Sfera, Al Rudwaniye, Castello, and Kafar Hamra. Army troops also targeted an armed terrorist group trying to break into the Grand Umayyad Mosque in the ancient city of Aleppo, killing and wounding scores of them. The army has also destroyed a number of cars loaded with weapons, ammunition and grab missiles and seized a warehouse of weapons. Army troops also captured a number of terrorists including Egyptians and Jordanian as well as a leader of an armed terrorist group belonging to the Qaeda-linked so-called State of Iraq and Sham in al najiye Al-Darra, Darwashan and al rabia villages in Latakia's northern suburbs. In Al Hasake, Syrian Arab army forces ambushed and captured four terrorists, one of them from Jabhat al Nusra, and confiscated their weapons. Israeli occupation soldiers transported into Israeli hospitals four wounded terrorists belonging to armed terrorist groups in Syria. Israeli radio reported that three terrorists were taken to Nahariya hospital for treatment. The radio added that more than 100 wounded terrorists had already received treatment there. Another wounded terrorist was taken to Zaef hospital in Safad as 121 others had already received treatment there. Participating in a ceremony held in honor of a number of martyrs' relatives at Dar al-Assad for culture and arts in Damascus, Prime Minister Wa'il al-Halaqi has affirmed the government's plan to establish an institution that takes care of martyrs' affairs, relatives and children of all age categories to prepare them for contributing to the construction of the homeland in the future. Within the framework of cooperation between the Ministry of Health and the UN Refugee Commission, a shipment of medicine including drug for kidney transplantation worth of $180,000 has been given to be distributed according to need in different governorates. Minister of Health Dr. Saad Naif stressed during his meeting with the representative of Refugee Commission Dr. Tariq Al-Kurdi that the Ministry highly appreciates the cooperation between the two sides, especially the medical aid offered to Syria after some health institutions targeted by armed terrorist groups. For his part, Dr. Tariq al-Kurdi said that his commission has already offered $3 million medical aid to Syria, pointing out that the cooperation will continue. In Iraq, security forces targeted tents for the so-called Islamic State of Iraq and Sham. The Iraqi forces captured 42 terrorists belonging to Al-Qaeda terrorist group, as one Iraqi source revealed that a training camp was discovered along the Syrian-Iraqi borders funded by the terrorist Bandar Bun Sultan. Libyan Prime Minister Ali Zidane has been freed after kidnappers abducted him earlier today from a Tripoli hotel and took him to an undisclosed location. Government spokesman Mohammed Kaabar told the agency Lana that Zidane has been set free and was on his way to his office. Gunmen broke into the luxury hotel in downtown Tripoli where Zidane lives and abducted him and two of his guards. The abduction came after Saturday's U.S. Special Forces raid that captured Abu Anas in Libya, a suspected militant wanted by America for more than a decade over the 1998 bombings of U.S. embassies in Africa. Now to latest business and market news, but after a short break, stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back.
Director General of Cotton Establishment, Engineer Abdel Qader Mawaldi, called the cotton farmers to deliver their products to the centers and cotton gins, gins after taking all the required measures related to delivery process. The engineer pointed to the facilities given by the establishment and the Ministry of Industry to buy all the quantities as well paying for the transfer for all the products of this season to the centers of the establishment. The price of one kilogram of cotton as determined by the establishment will be 100 Syrian pounds. The total quantity of cotton delivered to the centers since the beginning of the season has reached 1,472 tons. The estimated quantities of the production of this season is about 200,000 tons pointed out that delivery centers are capable of receiving double quantities during the current season. The price of oil fell the most in three weeks after a report from the Energy Department showed a big increase in supplies. Benchmark crude for November delivery fell 1.88 US dollars to 101.61 US dollars a barrel on the New York Mercantile Exchange. Signs of weakening global demand are also weighing on prices. Stocks waver between melt gains and losses for much of the session. The Dow Jones Industrial Average rose 26.45 points. The Standard & Poor's 500 Index edged up 0.95 points. The Nasdaq Composite Index lost 17.06 points. Prices dipped below 1,300 US dollars per ounce for the first time in one week yesterday in London. Silver followed gold prices down but retained a 10 cent gain for the week so far. Gold prices for Euro investors also eased back, touching last week's closing level at 967 euros per ounce as the single currency fell despite much stronger than expected German industrial output data for August. The US dollar rose and European shares fell into the red for the day after earlier recovering losses. US stocks also dropped. The pound fell hard, dropping to a two-week low beneath 1.60 US dollars. The US dollar strengthened against the yen for the third day, the longest run of gains in a month and it signs US lawmakers may reach a compromise to avert an unprecedented default. This will end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syrianonline.sy. God bless Syria.